In this tutorial, I'm going to get you started writing your own DAX formulas in both Power BI and Excel. I'll cover where you can find a complete list of functions available, where and how to write DAX formulas, and teach you the fundamental concept of context, which is key to being able to write dynamic DAX formulas. DAX is the Power Pivot formula language available in both Power BI and Excel. It stands for Data Analysis Expression. As you can see, DAX functions are very similar to Excel functions, so it's relatively easy for us Excel users to pick up. We use DAX formulas to perform advanced calculations on data in related tables and columns in Power Pivot for Excel and Power Pivot in Power BI. So what is Power Pivot? I like to think of Power Pivot as a mashup of Excel pivot tables and Access. If you're familiar with both of these, then you've got Head Start and you'll instantly recognize the access features available in Power Pivot. Power Pivot stores data in separate tables and just like Access and other relational databases, we can build relationships between the tables, which enables us to write DAX formulas. Measures enable us to analyze the data in a pivot table or pivot chart in Excel, or in tables and visuals in Power BI. You'll find a complete list of DAX functions here and I'll pop the link in the video description. There's over 250 functions and the list is growing all the time. Each function page has a description, syntax, parameters, remarks, and an example. Now it's important to note that not all the functions available in Power BI are available in Excel. And unfortunately the documentation doesn't tell you if a function isn't available in Excel. The only way you'll know is to try it and if the IntelliSense doesn't auto-complete the function name as you type, then it's not available. For example, here in Power BI, I can type in remove filters. We can see the IntelliSense offers it to me in the list and I can tab to select it and start entering the formula. However, if we try that same function in Excel, you can see once I get to M for remove, the IntelliSense list goes away. And if we scroll down, we can see that we've got related table, replace and then repeat, but no remove filters. So we know this function isn't available in Excel, but don't worry too much if a function isn't available because there'll be a workaround that enables you to perform the calculation using different functions. All right, let's look at some DAX formula examples and we'll do that starting in Power BI. Now DAX formulas are used in measures, calculated columns, calculated tables, and row level security. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on writing DAX measures because measures are what you use in your Power BI visuals and Excel pivot tables. In both Excel and Power BI, there are a few entry points for writing them. Here in the Power BI report view, we can write measures by the home tab and you'll also find it on the modeling tab. And if you have a table selected, we also get the table tools tab, the contextual tab, and we have new measure on there. If we go into the data view, you have the table tools tab with new measure. And if you have a measure selected as I do here, we also have measure tools with new measure. The other way we can create a new measure is by clicking on the ellipsis for a table and then new measure. Any of these open the formula bar where we can write our measure. Now my model contains IT cost data by department, region and business area. Let's say I want to write a measure that sums the forecast cost. So let's give it the name forecast cost or costs, and then we can write the formula. We'll use the sum function. We want to sum the forecast column of the forecast table. So I'm just going to tab to select it and close parentheses. We can see the forecast column there contains our forecast values. I can either press enter or click on the check mark to complete the measure. And notice the formula looks very similar to an Excel formula. It even has the same function name we're familiar with in Excel. And if we look in the field list, we can see our new measure here and it's denoted by the calculator icon. We can use this measure in our report view. So over here, we can see our forecast table and there it is there. If I check the box, Power BI will automatically insert the column chart. I can change the visualization type. A cluster bar chart might be better for what I want. Let's look at it by IT area. So I'll check the box for IT area and you can see my forecast costs are broken down by the IT area without me having to write a different formula. Now this is a simple example. Let's switch to Excel 
and see where to write measures there as well as understand the fundamental concept of filter context. Now in Excel we can write measures by the Power Pivot tab, Measures, New Measure, or we can open up the Power Pivot window via the Manage button and write a measure anywhere in this bottom section here, which is also adjustable. So if you have lots of measures, you can make it bigger. Let's write the same forecast measure here. I'm on the forecast table. So here I want forecast total and notice it's writing it in the formula bar. Now in Excel, it's a little bit different. I start with a measure name and then immediately after it without any spaces, I enter a colon and an equal sign and then the function. And again, we want the forecast from the forecast table, close parentheses. Here I can hit enter or the check mark. So there's my forecast total. It's currently showing me a number here and that's essentially the total of this column. Let's give the measure some formatting so that when we use it in the pivot table, it's automatically formatted. I don't need to do any more. So remember, I wrote this on the forecast table. So now when we go back into Excel, if I insert a pivot table from the data model and we look at the forecast table, you can see there's my measure there. It's denoted by the function icon telling me that this is a measure. So let's build a pivot table using this new measure so we can get to grips with the fundamental concept of filter context. So it's currently showing me the total forecast. Now at this level, there are no filters applied. It simply shows me the total of the forecast column. Let's also break it down by IT area. And as I add fields to the pivot table, the measure recalculates just like it did in Power BI. I haven't had to rewrite the formula. Let's also add a filter for the cost element group. And I'm going to filter it for labor. Now my pivot table is showing the forecast for labor by IT area. In other words, the forecast total measure I wrote is respecting the filter context of each cell in the pivot table. And that enables me to write one formula and have it dynamically adapt to return multiple results as I make changes to my pivot table. To labor the point, if we take one cell as an example, say enablement, the DAX formula here is being filtered by the row label enablement and the filter for the labor cost element group and so on for each cell. In Power BI, it works in the same way. So here I can add in a slicer for the cost element group. Let's just bring it up beside the chart and I can select labor. You can see my charts automatically updated to filter the data for labor. I haven't had to rewrite the measure. Now what we've seen so far are explicit measures. That is measures that we write ourselves explicitly. However, both Power BI and Excel can write measures for you, and these are called implicit measures. Now we do this anytime we use a field in a pivot table, chart, or the visuals values area in Power BI. In Power BI, fields that contain the sigma sign are typically the ones you'd want in the values area of a visual. So for example, here, if we look at the budget table and we select the bar chart, we can add the budget to the visual. Now I haven't had to write a measure there. Power BI has implicitly written me a measure and I can click on the drop down arrow here and change the aggregation method from the default, which is sum. Now implicit measures also respect filter context. As you can see, it's broken down by the IT areas. If I change the filter context here and change the cost element group to hardware and software, you can see both measures have updated respecting filter context. We can do this in Excel as well. So let's go and take a look here. Let's say I want to see the budget amount. Let's drag it into the values area. And there we have the sum of budget. I haven't had to write a measure. Excel has automatically written it for me. In Excel, you can change the aggregation method by right clicking and then summarize values by, and we get the same options here as we see in Power BI and in more options, you can see the full list. So far, we've looked at some really basic measures and you may have noticed that we didn't even need to write them because we could simply use the implicit measures available when we drag fields into the values area of the pivot tables and visuals. But typically you'll be writing more complex measures where you nest functions, just like we can in Excel. For example, let's say I want to calculate what the percentage of the forecast is of the total budget. So for each IT areas forecast, I want the percentage these values are of the total budget. 
And for that, I'm going to need a new measure that's going to return this total budget on every row. So let's go ahead and do that via the Power Pivot tab, Measures, New Measure. I actually prefer to write my measures in this dialog box here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We can choose the table that it's associated with. We'll leave it attached to budget and we can give it a name, budget total. We can give it a description. I'm going to leave that blank. It's fairly self-explanatory. Now I can use the calculate function and that's going to enable me to modify the contextual filters. Let's control and mouse wheel to make it a bit bigger. Now the first argument for calculate is the expression. That is what result, what value do we want to return? I'm just going to shift and enter to bring that down onto the next line. And for this, we want to sum the budget total. So the budget column of the budget table, I want to sum. The next argument for calculate is the filter. Now in this case, I want to remove the contextual filters for the IT area. And I can use the all function for that. All ignores filters for the specified table or column. So in this case, I want to ignore the filters for the IT area. So that's going to be my argument for all. And then all I need to do is close parentheses on calculate. Let's check the formula. We get the check mark, perfect. Let's give this currency sign and no decimal places. I'll click OK. It automatically gets added to the pivot table. We can see it there in the field list for the budget table. So now I can divide business area supports forecast by the budget total and calculate my percentage. Now I could write another measure for this, but I'm going to modify the one we've already written. So instead of budget total, let's edit that and we'll give it a different name. This is actually going to become my forecast percentage of total budget. And let's control and mouse wheel up to make this a bit bigger and easier to read. So the function we're going to use here is divide. The nice thing about divide is it automatically hides any division by zero errors. The first argument is the numerator and that's going to be my forecast total. We already have written that measure, so let's use it there. So in this formula, we're referencing a measure and we're nesting some other functions. Let's put a comma in there. The next argument is the denominator. That's my budget total, which I've already written with the calculate formula. So all I'm left to do is close parentheses on divide. Let's check the formula. We get no errors. Now this time we want it to be a percentage and let's give it one decimal place. Click OK and close. And now it's converted the field to my amended measure, which shows me the forecast percentage of the total budget. We can see there that we're nearly 2% over budget based on the forecast. We can see the breakdown of the percentages. Here you can see that DAX formulas are very similar to Excel formulas in the way they're written. Of course, the major difference is the filter context and how those formulas behave when you use them in pivot tables or Power BI visuals. For example, I can insert a slicer for the cost element group. And as I change the cost element group in the slicer, you can see the measures automatically update without me having to rewrite the formulas. I hope you're excited to get started writing your own DAX formulas. If you'd like to learn more DAX and Power Pivot, please consider my Power Pivot and DAX course. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.